that girl from Paris, Henry King and his orchestra are playing Love and Learn. Hey there, I'm Mike Gillette, your host, and this is the Soundscape Series, 1937, Part 14, Episode 47 of When Radio Ruled. This podcast is a montage of excerpts from old-time radio shows performed live and broadcast July 11 to August 8, 1937. Starring Charlie McCarthy, Donna Michi, Gladys George, Edgar Bergen, W.C. Fields, Robert Armbruster, Dorothy Lamore, Pinky Tomlin, Fibber McGee and Molly, Harlow Wilcox, Bruna Castagna, Eddie Stanley and more. Featured songs include Dorothy Lamore and Charlie McCarthy, The Merry-Go-Round Broke Down, Pinky Tomlin, I Guess I'm Just a Country Boy at Heart and That's What You Think, these soundscapes are the result of the research phase of when radio ruled historical documentary series. In order to find the best old-time radio excerpts to express the essence of the era, I listen to hundreds of hours of old-time radio broadcasts, looking for the most interesting bits. When I hear something outstanding, a song or a joke or a comedy sketch, a news report or an interview, I add it to a best of clip reel so I can easily find all the best excerpts when creating the documentary. But not everything can get in the final version. For 1937, I boiled 6.3 days of programming down to 27 hours of excerpts, from which a little under 5 hours made the final cut. And it seems like such a waste. Listening to these clip reels is one of my favorite parts of the process. I don't remember what I put on each reel, so they contain one unexpected gem after another. And I want to share that experience with you. These excerpts are offered without commentary for your entertainment and education. So here are voices from 1937, voices sadly now silenced. Great performers living again because you're listening to them perform live now. born in the first. Sam born in the first. Sam born in the first. Hey, Charlie, Charlie, just a minute. What is this Sam born in the first? I got a hop tip, a red hop tip. Sam born in the first. Sam born in the first. Well, Sam well, what, what is it, Charlie? It's a race. It's a sure bet. Take my word for it, Mr. Abici. All the horses will be chasing Sam born down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure chasing Sanborn will win, Charlie? It's in the bag. You got it? You get it? You yeah, get it. I get it, but where'd you get it? Oh, it's just a little thing I invented. You invented? Oh, you're an inventor, huh? Yes, and it's... Say, I know somebody who's very much interested in inventors. Uh, oh, here she is, uh, uh, Miss George. Do you know Charlie McCarthy, the peerless inventor? Oh, I love peerless people. I hate cowards. Yeah, uh, well... <laughs> Um, I hope you're really an inventor, not an imposter. Oh, oh no, no, you can be sure. I'm practically sitting in the car right now, you know. <laughs> oh, that's too magnanimous. <laughs> what is your latest invention, Charlie? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you see, uh, we, um, well, let's see, what day is it today? <laughs> well, back in 1918... And then came the war, and then 1924, and, uh, uh, what did we invent, Bergen? Well, now, Charlie, you know I haven't invented anything. Oh, yes, you have. Don't you believe in this, George? He's fibbing. I love truthful people. I hate procrastinators. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Can't stand those perambulators. Uh, whatever. <laughs> now, so help me, Bergen's greatest invention was when he invented me. That takes genius, you know. Now, Charlie. Uh, what an invention. I am Bergen's piece de resistance. Translated from the French, that means bread and butter. <laughs> you know, I've often wondered what that meant. Uh -huh. But I'm more interested in you, Charlie, than the man who constricted you. Yes. <laughs> oh, do you really mean that? <laughs> Oh, be still, my heart. <laughs> Scrambergen. All right. <laughs> uh, would you like... Oh, tell me, Charlie. Huh? Tell me, really. Yeah. Would you... Would you like to be in pictures? Uh, here I go again. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, <clears throat> coming back to the invention. My first invention was a combination dictaphone and printing press, and it takes dictation, shorthand, and typing, and does anything. Oh. Anything. Is that marvelous? Yeah. Does it peel potatoes? 
<laughs> well, if you can peel it, if you can dictate a potato, it'll peel it, I think. <laughs> oh, that's too marvelous. But uh, what do you have to do to operate this machine, Charlie? Uh, well, all you have to do is talk into the machine, see? And as you talk, the type falls automatically, and the press starts rolling around, and out it comes. Out comes what? Well, we've often wondered. <laughs> We're having it analyzed now. It's a great machine. Of course it isn't perfected yet. There's something, uh, something missing somewhere. And what do you think is missing, Charlie? Well, for one thing, our assistant. <laughs> the last time I saw him, he was leaning in the machine, and his tie got caught. Oh, what a cataclysm. Well... <laughs> What happened? Well, it's hard to say. His wife has been calling every half hour. But we don't feel that she'd be satisfied with what's coming out. <laughs> oh, how disconcerted. Oh, it does. It'll do it every time, yeah. But my greatest invention, Miss George, uh, you haven't heard about that, have you? No, I haven't. Uh, you know you're so versatile. Oh, I... Uh, huh? <laughs> Yes, indeedy, indeedy. My greatest invention was a lawnmower, but it wouldn't cut grass, eh? So I invented grass seed that wouldn't grow. Oh, how absolutely excavating. Uh, this is getting annoying. <laughs> but I found out what, what wouldn't make, why it wouldn't cut grass. It needed someone to push it, see? So I put a gasoline engine on the lawnmower. Oh, did that help, Charlie? Help? You couldn't hold it from there on. <laughs> I had to keep it locked up in a barn. One day I left the barn door open and it got away. Last time I saw it, it was going down Hollywood Boulevard. Fifteen policemen trying to corner it. Oh, those poor policemen. Yeah. Did it hurt them? Did it hurt them? It clipped them and it mulled them down. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going for a vacation. Far away from insults. Hurled at me by that little rat, Charlie McCarthy. Ah. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Bill. Here's your nemesis, Charlie McCarthy. Hello, Mr. Fields. I heard you tell Mr. Nietzsche you're going away on a vacation, huh? Well, do you want to make anything out of it? No. No, Mr. Fields, but can I ask you where you're going? Yes, you can. Well, why don't you tell him, Bill? Why don't he ask me? <laughs> Go ahead and ask him, Charlie. All right, I will. Where are you going? I'm going far away, far from the maddening crowd. Far from the horse cars and the crack of the driver's whip. Brrr, crack, crack, <laughs> Get up there, Mag. Get on, Mag, horse. <laughs> Was I happy when gasoline took the place of oats? <laughs> Those were the happy days when the attendant would say, How many bushels? <laughs> what kind of cracked corn? And shall I look at a shoe? Then look at me and then at the horse. And say, is the tank full? <laughs> and he looked back at his shoes. Uh, Bill, are, are, you, are you going, into, you the going woods? into the woods? Uh, which one shall I answer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the woods to dig up another McCarthy for Bergen. I remember, Charles. I remember you to all your relatives. I love the woods, Mr. Field. Who cares? <laughs> Will you take me with you, Mr. Fields? What? Take a sandwich to a picnic? Oh. <laughs> On second thought, I may take you, my diminutive little chum. <laughs> if I run out of matches, you can rub your hands together and start a fire. Oh. <laughs> then you will take me, won't you, Mr. Fields? Can I sleep in the pup tent? Yeah. No, my pup tent is very small. I use it to cover my dog. Oh. Pup tent. Dogs, meaning feet. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. 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 And after dinner, Charles, you can take a nap in the fireplace and keep us both warm. <laughs> the evenings will be cool. Uh, Bill, you know, Charlie is already threatened to go on strike. Uh, pick it in the fence factory, eh? Yeah. Oh. I killed that one for him. Say, hey, Bill, do you expect to do any fishing while you're away? Don, I had a very unhappy experience while fishing once, an experience I shall never forget. Well, what was that, Bill? I shall never forget it. Yeah, well, what was it, Bill? I can't remember just now. <laughs> but I know it was an experience I shall never forget. Oh, I see. Uh, it comes back to me as though a dream. I was out in the woods doing a little fishing up at Lake Titicaca. <laughs> what? Just a lake. 
I caught a little fish. Yeah, go on. A minnow. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. I looked at the little fellow's face. There was a tear in his sad, bleary eye. It may have been a dewdrop. <laughs> yes, Bill. Dewdrop, yes. Yeah. Yes. But when I released him from the hook, he showed his gratitude. Oh, he was glad to get off the hook, huh? Aren't we all? <laughs> He wagged his little tail, gambled on the green, and sang, and tomorrow will be Friday. Yeah, I know. The fish was a crooner, huh? He went boo-boo-boo, boo-boo-boo. Before you ate him and after you ate him, he went boo-boo twice. (laughs) Thing like this and people like you that drive people like me to places where I'm going. The fish was no crooner. He didn't even know what a horse looked like. Very subtle, very subtle. <laughs> he wasn't running a racetrack either. <laughs> if you have any more like that thing, save them till you return to the air. Is Mr. Field, are, are you eating a tomato or is that your nose? <laughs> That's a comical. That's a comical. Keep quiet. Uh, Stop scratching yourself. You'll get sawdust all over the floor. (laughs) Make this place look like a bar room in a minute. You must scratch yourself. Keep walking around that cuspidor over there. Bill, look, though. What about that fish you caught? Oh, yes. Thanks, Don. I almost forgot about it. I took the little sick fish home. I know. In a bucket of well water. Very good, Charles. Very good. <laughs> Sick fish, well water. Yeah. Very good, excellent. I like the Yeah. And then I began a startling scientific experiment in advanced ichthyology, meaning the study of fish, Tom. Yeah, I know, Bill. Anything you don't understand, I'll only be too pleased to explain. Yeah, I, I know ichthyology is the study of fish, Bill. Go By on. removing a cup full of water from the bucket each day, I ultimately got the fish to live without any water at all. In fact, at the completion of my experiment, the fish could not hardly drink water. I had to feed him out of a bottle, a little water on the side. <laughs> Did the fish get drunk, Mr. Fields? Uh, don't leave that kid out in the rain so much. The brain is warped. <laughs> The little fish would then follow me around like a dog. One day I was out in the woods hunting. What were you hunting, Mr. Fields? Uh, we were shooting camel. Oh. The camel hair coat. <laughs> I finally turned around. I missed his little fin steps behind me. Fin steps? I heard a splash in the brook beside me. I immediately removed my habiliment, my alpaca coat, my pale green trousers, my pig top hat. Yeah, I, I know, Bill. Your habiliment. Uh, my socks and garters. With gold initials on them, engraved. With love to dear William from Minnie. Minnie who? Minnie, ha ha. <laughs> I won't tell you. <laughs> anyway, Bill, you heard a splash, and then what happened? I can't help thinking of that last one, that Minnie, ha ha. <laughs> yeah, you heard a splash. Don't yeah, you? oh yes, I heard a splash. I wheeled around pronto, and to my great dismay, I found that. I know the fish fell in a brook and was drowned. <laughs> He beat you to the punch that time, Bill. Uh, nothing of the kind. That isn't the answer. A dog had treed my little fish. Oh, wait a, wait a minute, Bill. You mean a dog had treed your fish? Oh, yes, Don, I forgot to tell you. It was a catfish. <laughs> all right, all right, continue, Bill. Yeah. I'm sorry we mentioned that. Uh, he later threw in a flying fish. We flew across the Andes together. Amos and Andes, you mean? <laughs> listen, Charles, listen. Don't mention names on this program, dear. Am I right, Donald? Bill, I hear you're going away on a vacation. Is that true? Do I have to go over this all again? Who is this, Don? Why, Bill, that's Bob Armbrust, our orchestra leader. Don't you remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. What happened to his dialect? Oh, I was just putting that on for Charlie. Uh, Put it back on again. See if I can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mr. Fields, when you're away, you going to send us a postcard? No, I'll send you some termites. I want a postcard. That's, uh, I like postcards better. Yeah, you get termites just the same. Uh, do you expect to bring anything back alive, Mr. Fields? Plenty. <laughs> if you've ever been camping, you know what I mean. <laughs> Take care of Charles. I'll do my best, Bill. 
I'm going to start a savings account for little Charlie. Mm-hmm. Oh, a little savings account, yeah. eh? <laughs> very subtle, very subtle. <laughs> good, oh. good, yeah. Mr. Fields, uh, yeah? can, I, can I ask you, if, if, before you go on oh, yeah. a vacation, can I ask oh, you a little favor? Sorry, is it long? No, Mr. Fields, I just want to know, would you like to kiss me goodbye? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's a great idea, Bill. Go on, go on, before you start fighting again. Kiss Charlie and make up. Yeah. I've been picking my teeth with better wood than him for years. <laughs> I'd rather be kissed by a baseball bat. <laughs> I have dedicated this little poem to this momentous occasion. Farewell, goodbye, my little chum. Hello, soon shall say. Hello, Bill. Oh, oh, what fun is going coming. Yes, sir, yeah, yeah. And going, coming, too. The choo-choo train goes woo-woo-wooing. <laughs> Woo-goo-gooing. Uh, evidently written by a Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> and so, kind friends, to do. And to, and to, my kind of fool, I'm da Well, you've all been looking forward to reporting to your vacation, Bill. So long, and thank you very much, W.C. Field. Ask me why I'm happy singing like a lark And I'll tell you of an old amusement park A merry-go-round was there I gladly paid the fare My Charlie rode around with me Then suddenly Oh, the merry-go-round broke down As we went round and round Each time to admit we'd steal a kiss While the merry-go-round went Bop, 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 The merry-go-round broke down and made the darndest sound. The lights went low, we both, and oh, and the merry-go-round went bop, 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 bop. Oh, what fun, a wonderful time, finding love for only a dime. The merry-go-round broke down, and you don't see me frown. Things turned out fine, and now he's mine, because the merry-go-round went bop, 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 bop. The merry go round broke down. Next you can lean out the farthest. <laughs> oh, I get to go I'm, a, I'm a cowboy. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, my, oh, my. Trouble, trouble. Nothing but trouble. Here we are, Dorothy, you and I, going around for the first time together, and the merry-go-round broke down. Yes, and just when I was going to get the brass ring, yeah. too. You know, if I wasn't so liberal, I'd ask for my money back, if that guy wasn't so big. Well, what would you like to do, Charlie? Anything you want to do, we'll do. It's on me. This is a big evening. Whoopee! Well, Charlie, I just love popcorn, and that oh. popcorn over there smells awfully good. Yeah, well, you come right over to the booth where you can smell it better. <laughs> Oh, look at that girl with all the snakes, Charlie. Isn't she charming? Ooh. And look at those teeth. The what? Bang. Bang. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, watch out, Charlie. Here Howdy, comes W.C. Field. Don't be silly, Dottie. That's a little boy with a hurry, red balloon. Hurry, hurry, hurry. A free ride outside show is starting yeah. right now. Hurry, 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 hurry. You heard? You heard what the man said? It's a free you show. You before hurry. you a glittering, glamorous, gorgeous galaxy for? of gargantuan grandeur. Yeah. A show full of curiosities gathered from every corner oh, of the globe. Boy. Clang, clang, clang. The cucumonger man. The That's only bad. man with the red dude nose. Woo. Edgar, the invincible. The two-in-one man with oh. the bifurcated larynx. I got to see Countess that. Countess Kawani, the queen of the archipelago, is doing her work. World famous native dancers. Uh-oh. It's educational and instructive. I love it. Tonight, education. for advertising purposes only, the admission yeah. is not $1, not no. 50 cents. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, not 25 cents, yeah. but 10 cents. The oh. fifth part of a dollar. One dime. Isn't Ladies that's and gentlemen, wonderful, that's Charlie. Dollar. All that for a dime. It isn't worth a dime. Come on, Dorothy. Let's go over to the merry-go-round. There's a man working on it now. I think it's one of Oh, the merry-go-round broke down as we went round and round each each time could miss, we'd steal a kiss while the merry-go-round went oompa pa oompa 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 pa The merry-go-round broke down and made the darndest sound. The lights went low, we both said, oh, and the merry-go-round went oompa pa oompa pa oompa pa pa Oh, what fun, a wonderful time, finding love for only a time. The merry-go-round broke down. But you don't see me frown. Things turned out fine, and now she's mine. Cause the merry-go-round broke down. You 
are listening to WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News Station. We invite you now to listen to the Hour of Charm. Boys, I, I really appreciate your advice, but Miss Seymour's big city stuff. I'm, I'm just a guy from the States. I pictured myself in a top hat Doing the avenue But I wasn't meant for a top hat Well, it's easy to see That it isn't for me I've seen the moon rise over Broadway Felt enchantment from the start Yet I keep thinking of a harvest moon I guess I'm just a country boy at heart The mighty skyline of Manhattan To some may be a work of art I can't forget the schoolhouse on the hill I guess I'm just a country boy at heart I've heard the rhythm of the latest swing band Oh, but that don't mean a thing to me I'd rather swing my partner to a fiddle than a bow Than go trucking to a Harlem Rhapsody Oh, I've seen a boat so long the Hudson Sail into harbor and depart I'd rather travel down a dusty lane I guess I'm just a country boy at heart the rhythm of the latest swing band Oh, but that don't mean a thing to me He'd rather swing his partner to the fiddle and Then go parking to a Harlem Rhapsody I guess I'm just a country boy and It's an eternity. Today, Jack Renard celebrates his 12th anniversary on the air by playing a cavalcade of theme songs from some of the famous programs he has conducted. Music by Renard. Telegram, telegram for Mr. McGee. Telegram. Here, boy, I'll take it. Okay. Hey, can I stay in here and listen to the program? You one of our fans, bud? Sure. Now, what program is it? <laughs> I Fibber McGee and Molly. Charlie McGee? No, Fibber McGee, bud. Oh, I guess I'm thinking of Charlie McCarthy, that other dummy. Well, thanks. <laughs>
I was out in Hollywood, I met a gorgeous blonde. And you know what she said to me? No. Oh, somebody told you. <laughs> See, I can't <laughs> Directing is old stuff to me. Oh, I used to toss off, toss off a mean epic in the old silent days. <laughs> <laughs> Director McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh, my. Director McGee, the devil-may-care dialogue doctor for dirty desperados, dogey dowagers, dangerous dudes, and dandiest doctor of delicate dilemmas from Dodsworth to Donald Duck. No greater honor can be bestowed upon any man than the quality of the achievements he bequeathed to posterity. Marconi is dead, but his work will live forever. His youthful genius brought out of the unknown the very means which now brings you these deserved tributes to his memory. It has brought to millions of people a source of education and entertainment that will profoundly change the social structure of the world. It is the basis upon which television, the newest marvel of science, will soon enable us to see the things that are now unseeable. Marconi will go through the ages as the inventor of radio. His place in history is secure, and deservedly so. This is the coast-to-coast -coast network of the Mutual Broadcasting System. What are you making such a fuss about, Stanley? I want the judge to know that I don't like the way the court is being run. Yeah, you and the president both. <laughs> quiet, Republicans, quiet. <laughs> Jack Renard salutes the United States Navy with a medley of songs of the sea. Music by Renard. We joined the Navy to see the world. And what did we see? We saw the sea. You're not scaring me You just think you're smart mm. If you keep on acting this way You just wait and see 
You'll be right where you were at the start. You're unfair. I'm gonna pick it. What you're doing to me ain't cricket. I'm to be your life's meal ticket. That's what you think. I just rock and smoke tobacco. Never say a word by cracky. While you keep talking and drive me wacky. That's what you think. You overwork that jawbone. Trying to keep me stepping. You ought to be put right in jail for carrying a dangerous weapon. You drag me through the old church doors, hoping someday I'd walk the floors with both arms full of little claymores. That's what you think. Give them jury boys the lowdown. Let that testimony go down. And I'll pay off when we reach that showdown. That's what you think. You can tell each doubting Thomas that I am guilty of breach of promise. And I'll go to prison in striped pajamas. That's what scares me to death. <laughs> and I've tried so hard to be a good guy, but my smile became a frown. I wouldn't be your better half for all the gas in Texaco town. So go ahead with that testimony. Tell them all I'm just a phony. I'll do time, but no matrimony. And that's what I think. That's what we think. Do you all think the way I think? I'm an old timer at the food business. You're telling me. Matter of fact, I used to run a whole string of jam and java joints up in Pocatello. Provision McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh, my. Provision McGee, the peppy personality, proprietor of premier produce places, providing pleased people of Pocatello the prettiest peaches, proudest peanuts, particularly palatable party pastries, and promoting poetic pies from Pocatello to Panama. <laughs> well, can you imagine that, Molly? And here I thought the food shop business would be a sink. Heavenly days, I couldn't even select any old accounts. Did you try? Why, sure. I sent an invoice marked overdue to that Mrs. Court, and I got it right back, refused. Oh, well, you should have known better, Molly. Nobody can put a court bill through these days. Uh, Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is WMAQ Chicago. Ted Weems and his orchestra are appearing in person this week on the stage of the Chicago Theater. WMAQ Chicago. What's the idea? You're late, Mr. Tomlin. Well, I needed to relax a little, so I went fishing. Boy, I fished all day and I didn't catch a thing. Stop kicking. I've been fishing for a man all my life and ain't caught one yet. <laughs> well, no, well, no wonder. Look, look at the bait you're using. <laughs> This is the Chase and Sanborn Hour, and this is Don Amici greeting you for Bruna Castagna, sensational new star of the Metropolitan Opera Company, who in one season has climbed to the very top of the operatic ladder. Oh, isn't that too bad? Isn't what too bad, Charlie? Imagine a girl with a voice like hers singing from the top of the ladder. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes, Charlie, my, yes. my, my. And greetings, too, from Dorothy L'Amour. Ah, Juliet L'Amour. I would I could climb the ladder to her balcony. <laughs> yes, oh, Romeo McCarthy. <laughs> and a hearty welcome from W.C. Fields. That's the bottom rung. Boo, 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 boo. And Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Ah, the top, the top. <laughs> and to top it off, a musical greeting from Robert Arm Brewster and the Chasen Sanborn Orchestra uh -huh. playing the hit tune from Mountain Music. Good morning. How do you do? And now I think we'd better prepare a warm birthday greeting for our obstreperous little pal, Charlie oh, McCarthy. As I remember it, Charlie was planning a surprise birthday party on himself today. <laughs> hey, Edgar, how about that party at Charlie's? Oh, oh yes, yes, how that is. Well, Don, I'm afraid about Charlie's party. I'm afraid it isn't going to come off at all. Is that right, Charlie? No, it isn't, Don. It's oh. all off. It's all off. Well, why, did, why did you call it off, Charlie? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Amici, there's been a lot of nasty talk going around. <laughs> Something about me inviting people to my birthday party just so I'd get a lot of presents. Well, you can't afford to have that kind of talk, Charlie. No. I'm not going to have anybody think that I'm small. No. No, sir. <laughs> so I'm not going to give a dinner party, that's all. Oh, you're not going to give it? No. Just let them bring the presents. I see. <laughs> 
Anyway, I, I haven't time for any of that small talk stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm busy with my correspondence course. Oh, so that's it? Yes. And what course is that? How to be a detective. Oh, I see. Yes. So now it's Sherlock McCarthy. That's the idea. Uh, and that's the reason for the Sherlock Holmes hat, is it? Yeah. I see. That's my two-way hat. Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm coming or going in. No. <laughs> well, what are you, Charlie? I'm a sort of a... Uh, I'm a sort of a secret surface. What? A uh, surface surface. Uh, surface, uh, surface uh, I don't know what I am. <laughs> oh, you're a secret service man. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Yes. And what case are you working on? Uh, that's a secret. Oh, that's a secret. <laughs> I well, I'm... Uh, I'm more of a lookout man. Oh, that's it? Yes. And what are you looking out for? I'm looking out for myself. Uh, <laughs> who are you looking out for? All right. <laughs> Did you hear that? What's that? I think I heard a fingerprint. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, you certainly are on the job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. How about the dogs? Oh, I got them, too. I thought so. And their bloodhounds? I don't think they are. No? I cut my finger the other day and one of the dogs fainted. <laughs> <laughs> the big one. Oh, you have two dogs. Yes. I see. Well, why two? Well, I got a big one and a little one. I see. If there's a burglar in the house, the little one wakes the big one up. I see. <laughs> the big one does the rough stuff. I see. <laughs> He's a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> the little one is a springer. Oh, <laughs> Oh, that's awful. Oh, please don't hate me for saying it. No. <laughs> what an outfit. Yeah, me and my dog. Here. Take a slant at this book, Bergen. What's that? There are pictures here uh, and descriptions of 20 wanted criminals. Oh, my. If I catch them, I get a reward. You mean here? Yeah. My, my. How much do you get, Charlie? Well, if I catch any three, I get my dollar back that I paid for the book. <laughs> uh, well, that's fine. Now, all you have to do is go out and get them. That's all I got to do. Now look at here, page three. That's that's baby face Willie. Mm hmm He picks up things that don't belong to him. Oh, I see. A kleptomaniac. Yes, he he goes, uh yeah, that's what he is, yes. <laughs> Are you taking the course? No, oh I don't. <laughs> Yes, he's, he's, uh, that's what he is. Yes. He's one of those, uh, klepto almanacs. No, okay. <laughs> uh, klepto men, uh, klepto malia, uh, manoklepti, manoklepti, eh? No. No, no. Klepto, nano, manoklepti, klepti, klepti. No. No. Oh, well, by golly, I'm warm. Yes, I know. <laughs> he's a horse thief. Oh, that's <laughs> Well, a kleptomaniac is not a horse thief. Well, then it's a horse on me. I don't care. <laughs> Dave, this is an interesting face. Page six. Yeah. Singing Joe. Yeah. yeah. I guess you can see who that is, can't you? What do you mean? Don't be silly. Look at it. Those eyes there. I don't know, Charlie. Don't you get it? No. That's Donna Michi. Donna Michi. <laughs> That's Donna Michi. Or I'm wrong. Yes. And I usually am. <laughs> Be careful, Charlie. Now, if you offend, if you offend Don, uh, I'll walk right out on you. Oh, so I won't talk, huh? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I see. When I'm after a man, I gotta get him. Yeah. Watch me tripping up. All right. <clears throat> Kindness first. Oh, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Mr. Amici, I'd like to talk to you. See? Why, well, yes, of course. What is it, Charlie? Uh, uh, watch him walk into the net. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm crafty. Yes. Uh, what's your name, Don Amici? Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Come clean now. Did you do it? Uh, do what? Never mind. I'm asking the questions. Oh. <laughs> Where were you on the night of June 15th? You lie. All right. We do. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm pretty sharp, huh? Yes. I got him scared. Oh, sure. Yeah. I have nothing to say. Put that down, Bergen. <laughs> you didn't say anything. I'll do the talking around here. All right. Okay. Hey, look. If you think I'm going to stand around here and listen to this nonsense, you're crazy. Uh-huh. Now, don't you move, stranger. I got you covered. All right. <laughs> Elias Amici, singing Joe. <laughs> see, I don't follow all this. Oh. Well, it's simple, Don. You see, Charlie has become a detective. Yes. That's what it is. We got your number, buddy. It's concerning that robbery in Allentown. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, suppose I did it. So what? Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Read a description, Bergen. Watch him sweat. It's all right, all right. It says here, Singing Joe always carries two guns and a knife. He's a killer. Don't try to capture him alone. See, does it say that? Yes. Yeah. Hey, 
Hello, Don. <laughs> you know, that description doesn't fit him at all. It doesn't. No. Oh, you're back in water, huh? Why don't you run me in? That's what I'm going to do, partner. What are you reaching for? What you got in your pocket? A gun? Yeah. I always carry a gun, don't you? Oh, well, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. but I've been killing so many people lately. Uh, uh, Pardon you got me. Well, I'm going to count five, and if you aren't gone by that time, I'll let you have it. Yeah, well, uh, just count one. <laughs> There's a young man here who is very anxious to meet you. Madam Castagna, this is your ardent admirer, Charlie McCarthy. Oh, hello. You are so cute. <laughs> oh, I don't deserve to be so handsome. <laughs> oh, Miss Castagna, I want you to meet my associate, Edgar Bergen. How do you do? Yeah, Miss Castagna, it, this has been a real pleasure to hear you sing this evening. I remember very well when I heard you in Milan. Oh, yes? Were you at La Scala di Milano? Yes, and that was the important event of my visit in Italy. That and the Colosseum. Yeah, I remember the Colosseum. We did four a day there. <laughs> <laughs> Worked like dogs. Yeah. No, Charlie, that's the Colosseum in London. Oh, uh, oh, is it there now? No, no. no. <laughs> the Colosseum in London has always been there. Oh, I misunderstood you. I thought you said it was in Rome. Oh, well, now, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, Miss Castagna, I-, I heard you sing Thursday night in the Hollywood Bowl. It was splendid. It was terrific. Tremendous. It was Coliseum. Oh, we're back to that again. <laughs> oh, thank you. I enjoy it, singing under the stars. Yes. Such a lovely audience. Yes, mm. they are nice, aren't they? I sang at the bowl two weeks ago. Did you really? Yes. You sang at the Hollywood Bowl? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It was a community sing. <laughs> <laughs> I even did a solo. Oh. A solo in a community scene? Yes. Oh, no, it does not sound right. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, it wasn't. (laughs) All the others finished together, but you know how I am. Once I get started, there's no stopping me. I'm so emotional. (laughs) All right. Uh, let me hear you sing, Charlie. No, no, please. No. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Oh, not here, no. Oh, um, yes. I want to hear you sing. Well, if you coax me, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Let me hear you sing. Yes. All right. I, all right, I will. Oh, I'm just putty in your hands. <laughs> I don't say this is perfect, no. Do, re, mi, fa, so, no, no. I think I broke it. <laughs> I'm, I'm at that awkward age, you know. My voice is changing. I just... <laughs> uh, well, try this. All right. Oh. Ah, well, now that's all right, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, do, oh, 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 oh. Charlie, you were flaked. Yeah? Well, I wasn't more than a half a note off, was I? Oh, half a note is enough. Well, that's what you got. What are you complaining about? Miss <laughs> <laughs> huh? Castagna, frankly, what do you think of Charlie's voice? Well, Mr. Amici, I have heard lots of singing, but yeah. never anything. Tanto male. Oh. Yeah, he's really he's... sound the Mali, isn't he? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, now yeah, break it yeah. <laughs> Did she say my voice was uncanny? <laughs> well, not exactly, Charlie. No, now come on out with it, Amici. What did she say about my voice now? Well, if you must know, she said you sing like a dog. Oh, <laughs> uh, like a what? <laughs> Oh, well, maybe she's right, you. Uh, are you going to sing again? You are, aren't you, Miss Castagna? Or may I call you Bruno? <laughs> Why, <laughs> of course. Oh, yes. Darling. Yes. Oh. Soon mm. I shall have the pleasure of singing the Gypsy song from the opera Carmen. Oh, what luck, what luck, Carmen. That's the old plantation song my uncle used to sing down south. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen down south? Yes, of course. Don't you remember? Eyes, Carmen. Eyes, Carmen. Well, how are you feeling, B? Uh, I mean, Bill. Uh, did you say Beak or Bill, Don? No, I, I said Bill. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling very colorful today, Don. Colorful, Bill? Uh, physically, I'm in the pink. 
Mentally, I'm in the blue, and financially, I'm in the red. He means he's nasally in the red. <laughs> very good, very good, Charles. Yeah. Pardon me, I didn't see you there. I thought someone left a mop on the chair. <laughs> Hey, Bill, what, what, what have you got that horn for? Oh, I forgot to tell you all about that, Don. My uncle's out there, a grand old gentleman. Can't hear very well, Don. Yeah, well, I, I still don't understand the horn. I blow the horn every time the folks laugh. Which, which, <laughs> pardon me, the teeth again, Don. <laughs> when and if, it sort of cues him, Don. Just so he won't laugh out of turn. Oh. Uh, uh, hello, Uncle. <laughs> hello, Uncle. Hello, Nevy. <laughs> hello, Nevy. Isn't he cute? He's a highly educated old gentleman, Don. Hello, Effingham. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty name, Bill. Oh, you haven't heard the half of it, Don. It's Effingham S. Frobisher. <laughs> yeah, well, well, what's the S for, Bill? Oh, we really don't know, Don. It might be for Stuart. <laughs> Friends all call him Stu. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to use the horn yet. And <laughs> yeah, not yet, Uncle. Don't, uh, don't laugh yet. I just <laughs> reached for it. He thought I was reaching for the horn, Don. Oh. First, uh... All right, I'll, I'll blow it for you, Uncle, later on. Say, he's a happy-looking old gentleman with that glint in his eye. Ah, uh, that isn't glint in his eye, Don. It's chewing gum. <laughs> he meant to put it in his mouth. <laughs> Put it in your mouth, Uncle. Put it in your mouth. Well, is he blind too, Bill? Every night. I mean, uh, <laughs> not for a week. I'm forgetting all about him. <laughs> That's all right. Calm down now, Uncle. Well, say, look, uh, uh, what does he do for a living, Bill? Why, mine's babies outside a cocktail barn. <laughs> Mine's babies outside a cocktail bar. Yeah, uh, babies and children, Don. The authorities won't let him take the children in the bars if they're under 21. Well, how many does he mind at a time, Bill? Oh, sometimes half a dozen, Don. I often help him out in a busy afternoon. Well, say, that's kind of you, Bill. Yes. Uncle brought a couple of the babies over at the house the other night. Uh, a couple of children? Oh, they're a couple of babies, Don. <laughs> yes, they were babies. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, what, what did you do, Bill? Oh, we held them on our knee. I first got out a bottle for them. Oh. <laughs> well, that, that, well, that was very thoughtful of you, Bill. D uh, did they cry? Only when we took the bottle away, Don. <laughs> he always takes the bottle away from everyone. No way, you fugitive from a wood pile. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bill, please, don't talk that way to Charlie. You know, it's his birthday today. Oh, you mean his wooden anniversary? <laughs> Remember, Mr. Fields, only God can make a tree. And only Bergen can make it tall. Yeah. <laughs> you take that down. Yeah. Yeah. Charles, you're... <laughs> Charles, you're becoming an old tease, a nag. Okay, Doc. Okay. Oh, oh, excuse me, okay. Bill. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, speaking of nags, Bill, were, were you down at Bing Crosby's racetrack again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going down there again and make a fool out of myself next week. Why, Bill? The track closed yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Certainly is. That isn't the right question, but go ahead anyway. Uh, look, Bill, did uh, Bing straighten out that honorary steward situation? Temporarily, Don. You know what happened yesterday? No, what, Bill? Bing offered to take my picture with the winning horse. Oh, well, that was swell. Just as the camera snapped, the horse turned his back to the lens. <laughs> I should have known when he switched his tail in my face that he wasn't posing properly. Well, uh, uh, how, how did this picture develop, Bill, with the horses back to the camera? Oh, it was terrible. When they showed the picture, one of the women said, look at those two horses, one hasn't a tail. <laughs> said he looks like a man's cat. <laughs> Let's forget about horses, Bill. All right. Say, say, I, I suppose being a sportsman, you know that today the hunting season opens up. Oh, I know, Don. I'm polishing up my guns and getting ready. I expect to shoot a half a dozen moose this year. Oh, that's right. You shoot <laughs> moose every year, don't you, Bill? Oh, yes, Don. I was drying with powder this morning. Uh, face, face powder, Mr. Field? Face powder? Yeah, face powder. <laughs> I think to kill moose with face powder. What a sap. <laughs> Uh, well, how can you kill a moose with face powder, Mr. Fields? I'll explain the whole thing to you, Charles, dear. I wish you would, yes. You fill the powder pot with face powder and then throw it at the moose. Oh. 
That knocks him down. Then your penis brings out with a cream pot. Oh. <laughs> you really want to know the truth, don't you? Oh, yes. Then you put a little salt on his tail, and that completes the trip. Uh-huh. Where'd that kid come from? Cucamonga? <laughs> Well, you know, I always thought you caught him in a trap, Mr. Fields. I kicked him in a trap. And smooch in a trap? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, you're not thinking of mouse by any chance, are you? Yeah, about... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a mouse is bigger, isn't it? Uh, or a moose is bigger, isn't it? <laughs> I think the uh, moose is slightly larger. The tail is about the same size, but the nose is larger. Are you a moose, Mr. Fields? No, Charles. They blackballed me. However, I am a member in very good standing in the Women's Christian Temperance Union. I know. A moose is a thing that carries a hat rack on its head, isn't it? I know. (laughs) Very funny, Charles. And a whisper him under his chin. <laughs> I've killed with moose with antlers 20 feet from tip to tip, Don. Antlers 20 feet, Bill? Yes, sir, 20 feet. Antlers? Don't talk. Eh? We got them down at our house, too. No, Charlie, we haven't any antlers at our house now. No, uh, he's probably thinking of ants. Yeah. Got ants in his pantry. <laughs> Say, Bill, uh, where, where, where do you hunt moose? Oh, up at Lake uh, Passamaquoddy. <laughs> Lake what? Oh, uh, sometimes up at uh, Winnipesaukee, I guess. Uh, <laughs> what What was that? Bang, name? bang, down goes the moon. Yeah, but uh, Bill, wh- where was that lake? I'll make it the reservoir in Central Park. <laughs> sometimes they shoot them with a bow and arrow when they're out of season, of course. Well, uh, are they any good out of season, Bill? Very good with mustard, Don. <laughs> The moose run around there with antlers 20 feet from tip to tip, as I told you. It's a thickly wooded country town. The trees aren't over a foot apart. The moose runs through the woods all winter. <laughs> How can a moose with 20-foot antlers run through the woods when the trees are only two feet apart? Two oh, feet, I said one, dear boy. The trees leave in the fall anyway. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, fine. suppose no, you no. don't shoot a moose, Mr. Fields, then what? Oh, we hunters always take it very philosophically, oh, Charles. Oh. We believe in the old adage, no moose is good moose. Oh. <laughs> Say, uh, Bill, I'd like to join you in a moose hunt sometime. I always welcome at the old cabin, Don. The latch key is out and the moose smells, uh, the moose hangs high. <laughs> hey, Bill, don't you mean the goose hangs high? Please, don't bring religion into this, Don. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Mm. Well, say, I, I'd love to go with you when you bag a moose, Bill. Yeah, yeah, how do you bag a moose, Mr. Fields? How Same do... as your bag coffee, Charles. Indeed, it bags. Her blend with the world's choices moose. Uh, wow. Bill, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait. Jason Sandborn is the moose for the money. Oh, <laughs> the moose for your money. <laughs> Pardon my redundancy, Don. I'm breaking myself up. Time out for levity. <laughs> All right, Bill. He's so amusing. Oh! <laughs> Don't laugh at that one, Uncle. It's very funny, Charles. Very funny. <laughs> you look funny spread all out over a checkerboard, wouldn't uh. you? <laughs> Bill, I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell you this before, but you should be very kind to Charlie today. Uh, he isn't feeling well, you know. He's he's all broken up. You mean he's coming apart? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, he needs a doctor, Bill. My brother could take care of him, Edgar. Oh. Is your brother a doctor, Mr. Fields? No, he's a woodturner, my little prickly pear. <laughs> no, but seriously, Bill, I'm thinking of sending Charlie to a camp. He just came from a lumber camp, didn't he? <laughs> I understand he got a jam up there, a log jam. <laughs> I'm getting too ridiculous to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Bill, considering your experience with medicine, you know... Oh, yeah, it's it, not the doctor. It, yes. yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'd like to ask you a few questions about Charlie's condition. Uh, I'm seriously worried. Uh, do you know, Bill, Charlie hasn't grown an inch in the last three years. Is that so? Not growing, eh? Maybe you're not using the right kind of fertilizer. Wow. <laughs> Say, look, Bill, Charlie does look bad, and he's got a great big bump on his head. Oh, let me see. That's no bump. Looks more like an egg. The woodpeckers have been nesting in his wig again. <laughs> Mr. Fields, I'd like to see your nose scrambled in an egg. You'd make a wonderful tomato omelet. <laughs> uh, Sensational, Charles. <laughs> Go here. I'll bend you into a hook. Where you are. 
What else is wrong with that fence post, Edgar? <laughs> well, you know, Charlie's teeth hurt him, and his skin isn't give, his skin is giving him a lot of trouble lately, Bill. In fact, I think his skin is worse than his teeth. Uh, as I've always yeah. contended, his bark is worse than his bite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Fields, I think I know what's wrong with me. I've got smallpox. Uh, keep away from me. Yeah, but look at my hands. Yeah, Bill, look, look at his hands. Yeah. Uh, that isn't smallpox. That's yeah. portion of his arms. You and out of an old cribbage boy. Oh. <laughs> Let's go, Uncle. All right. All right, Uncle. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Uncle Effingham S. Frobisher. Thank you, Edgar and Charlie. And thank you very much, WC <laughs> Just a minute, Mr. Amici. I'd like to ask you a question. Why? What's on your mind, Charlie? How, how could you marry a girl like Lula with Judy hanging around, especially when it's Dorothy Lamour plays the part? Oh, but Charlie, this, this was just a picture. And Dorothy was only playing the character of Judy in this preview. Oh. Well, how, how did the whole thing come out, Mr. Amici? Well, Charlie, you'll have to see the picture to find out how it really ends. Oh, I will. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, well, I've got a great finish, Mr. Amici. Yeah. You shoot Lulu and marry Judy. <laughs> well, that's a great idea, Charlie. I'll yeah. tell Daryl Zanuck about that. Would you? And remember when you tell him it's my idea, see? Yeah? I expect to get paid for it, you know. Yeah. Well, how much are you asking? Oh, pal, Joe. I'm asking 10000 Whoa. Well, I'll settle for a saw buck. Uh, well. Uh, how about a pass to the show? Well, I'll see if it can be fixed right. up for you, Charlie. Yeah. But just to give you an idea of how this picture does then, Dorothy and I are going to sing another of the songs. <laughs> you go for a little canter in the morning, madam? Oh, no, but I'd go for little Amos and Andy in the evening. <laughs> Matter of fact, bud, at one time I had me the finest herd of whole scenes in the whole state of Michigan. Moo Moo McGee, I was known as in them days. Moo Moo McGee, the mighty maestro of the milkmen, mainstay of the modern movement from manual manipulation of machine milking, and master of millions of metal American movies from Middleville, Maine to Monroe, Michigan. <laughs> So you're not speaking to me. And nevertheless, I brought a little present for you. Say more, something that'll make your mouth more attractive to everybody. Oh, a lipstick? No, a muzzle. <laughs> well, now, if you think I talk too much, why don't you practice what you preach? Remember, silence is golden. Say more, if silence is golden, you'll always be on relief. <laughs> Telegram for Eddie Stanley. Thanks, boy. Hey, Eddie, who's it from? Why, it's from Joe DiMaggio, the great baseball player. Yes? He says, why not hold the trial in the Yankee Stadium as that Oklahoma cowboy has turned it into a baseball game? What does he mean, baseball game? Well, the telegram says, Seymour wanted Pinky to make a double. She started to warm up, tried to put over a fast one, but he got a look at her curves and balked. <laughs> Sounded like thunder. Say, say, something funny is going on around here. Yeah, maybe you think it's funny, but I don't. Look behind you. It's the ghost of Shakespeare. Come on, come on. Cease this desecration of the immortal works of the Bard of Avon. Gee, Mr. Shakespeare, did you really come back? I had to come back. So many actors have butchered my plays. I got tired of turning over. Gee, was it as bad as all that? And when they did my plays on the New York stage, I turned over once a year. When they did my plays on the screen, I turned over twice a year. But now that they burn the radio, they call me Whirling Bill. <laughs> Shakespeare, we're not hurting your plays. Why, I did your works for years in vaudeville. Besides, Shakespeare's dead. Aye, and so is vaudeville. <laughs> well, what, what are you doing out here in Hollywood anyway, Mr. Shakespeare? I came back to join the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> of course, of course, for Hollywood, I have changed the spelling of my name. Well, how do you spell Shakespeare now? S-H-A-P-I-R-O Shapiro. <laughs> William Shakespeare. Hi. 
I have an abundance of screen credits. Ah, yes. I sold Romeo and Juliet to MGM, Midsummer Night's Dream to the Warner Brothers. And now, now I'm under contract to Hal Roach to knock out a little hunk for Spanky McFarlane. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Shakespeare, which of your plays do you think is your greatest work? Midsummer Night's Dream. Why, that picture grossed $50,000 at the Paramount against the double feature and Martha Ray. Oh, boy. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Shakespeare, it looks like your plays have been everywhere. No, not yet. Tonight you shall all witness my final triumph. Here, here are some passes for the Main Street Burlesque Theater, <laughs> where you will witness... Dreamline Shakespeare. What? Shakespeare in a burlesque theater? Yes. Come and see the Merry Wives of Windsor all doing a strip team. <laughs> Woo! Thanks for listening to 1937 Part 14, the Soundscapes Audio Montage Series Number 23 from When Radio Ruled. I'm Mike Gillette, your host. When Radio Ruled and the Soundscape Series are before TV productions. Copyright 2022.